Hi, it's Karen with Living Our Dream Homestead, where today I'm going to be showing you how we get our garden ready to plant. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please click the button down below. If you've already subscribed, thank you very much. Well, let me go ahead and show you my garden. Let's go. Here's my husband. He's tillering our garden. We're actually extending our garden out a little bit this year because I'm going to be planting uh, more tomatoes. I ended up buying about 52 tomatoes and in the last year we planted about 32. Uh, so this will be the first time he'll go through and tiller and then we still have over here we have to tiller over here as well. Now we will tiller our garden, oh gosh, several times. First it's tiller it now to break up, you know, the grass that has grown over this year. And then we are going to put some peat moss into the soil. It helps loosen the soil up. And we'll do that once he gets everything all tillered. Here's the bag of peat moss that we are going to go ahead and tiller into the garden. I'm just going to show you what it looks like because he has to go through and tiller, but it's real, real fine. That will make the soil real, real uh, loose. And also, it helps retain moisture. So like when you're watering, it will soak up the moisture like a sponge and it will help your plants, especially when it's real dry out. Uh, we put peat moss in our garden, not every year, uh, but at least, I'd say, every every other year or you could skip two years you know do it this year and then skip two and then do it but it just it's an excellent thing for your garden Let's put that back in there <clears throat> here's my husband he's tillering again again like i said we tiller it several times to get the dirt as loose as possible so that we can plant getting ready to go ahead and plant my peppers. This is actually a big Bertha green pepper and I went ahead and dug the hole. Now this is where I was talking about drying your eggshells and keeping them. I usually end up breaking up several pieces. Sometimes I use a teaspoonful and I put that in the hole there. And then I go ahead and put my pepper plant in there. And the reason being is the eggshells dried is added calcium and it will prevent bottom rot. Here's the plant after planting it. Now all throughout the season I will add a little bit more of the crushed eggshells that I have right here. That I have dried. And I will put it around the plant for added extra calcium but I did put quite a bit in the hole. Alright here I got a hole and I'm going to go ahead and put in a tomato plant. Again I put in the eggshells in the bottom for the added calcium. Here's the tomato plant. Again all throughout the season I'll put some more crushed eggshells around the plant to help it. This is a cheap inexpensive way of adding more calcium to your tomatoes and your peppers to prevent bottom rot. So, and again, it's all natural as well. Here's part of the garden. We planted about 52 tomato plants. We've planted some watermelon, summer squash, pumpkins, cantaloupe, and we've done some onions. And we also have some of the garden over here where we've done green beans and some corn as well. Here's where my son uh, planted all his tomatoes over here. We usually give him one side of the garden there to plant. And then right here, we've planted eight rows that are 75 feet long of Blue Lake bush beans that my husband ended up planting. My blackberries are coming along nicely. They're blooming quite well. I'm hoping to have several here. 
this year. And now I'm going to show you where I decided to organize my canning room. It's always good to go through your canning stuff to see what you have uh, so you don't maybe you don't need to can this much this year uh, and you know organize it. So I will go ahead and show you that right here. Today's chore is I'm going through and pulling out the empty jars and I'm seeing what I've got. You know, how much do I need to can this year? Clearly, I've got quite a bit here. Uh, these beans right here are from last year and this row as well. So that's a lot left. This is from 2022 that I have left, which is about 41 quarts uh, plus the pint. So that is quite a bit. So I won't have to maybe can as much this year in the beans uh, again we are growing beans well we're growing a whole bunch of stuff so i can start selling to the public i have been selling my duck eggs and chicken eggs already to the public the extras because i just usually have so much here but i'm just trying to reorganize and try to put like the newest stuff um, i've got chicken broth here that i've just canned this year and then I just did this strawberry preserves this year. And the strawberry preserves, the recipe, will be coming up here in the couple of uh, months in the summertime here. Uh, but all in all, I'll show you what it looks like. It's kind of hard to film because the room is so small to get in, just barely turn around uh, in. But I'm trying to organize as much as I got here and try to make it look a little neater. So I again, I know what I have. So then maybe I don't have to buy all those apples at the orchard. I mean, I will do some, but not a lot. I mean, I really haven't been buying that much applesauce because my husband and my family eats quite a bit. And now my kids have learned how to make their own applesauce. So that means I won't have to make as much uh, this year. All right, I finally got it cleaned. I got all my empty jars up there, all my green beans. I've got quite a bit, as you can see. That's applesauce that I did all last year. I think I ended up canning about, I think it was 60 pints. I don't think that's 60 there. I'd have to count them. And down here, I've got the tomatoes down here, right here. The ones on the end are the stewed tomato. I only did six jars this year, and I, I've only used two. The rest are all diced tomato, and like I said, they go all the way in the back there as well. So I have more than enough there. I've got blackberry jelly, peach preserves, I've got some peach nectar, which I've already posted the peach preserves and the peach nectar, or those videos have already run. And then we've got the chicken broth right there. And then the bottom shelf being with all the jars empty that's where I'll put my new green beans um, usually for my family I supply I supply green beans for my daughter and her family and if I get at least 60 quarts that's pretty good my son he actually now grows his own green beans but again we don't know from one year to the next if we're gonna have a good year or we're gonna have a bad year so that's why I always prepare um, but I think right there in the green beans, I have a hundred and some odd jars left. Again, that's 2022 and 2023. Uh, the most I have canned in green beans is 247 quarts. Uh, I picked them all myself and I can't, uh, I pressure canned them all myself. So I'm pretty serious about canning. Um, I do do a lot of as you can see, the tomatoes down there. I'm doing a lot of soup. I already posted that recipe up. I do tomato soup and I freeze it. And that lasts uh, my husband four months. So that's four months. I don't have to go to the grocery store. So otherwise, it looks like it's turned out a little bit better in the canning room. And it's pretty cool down here. Uh, the temperature is there's the temperature in the basement. It is 65 degrees. That room in there is a little bit cooler. So it's perfect for the canning jars. Well, thank you for watching. This was Karen with Living Our Dream Homestead. I hope you have a good day.